Welcome to In the Kitchen with Dina. Today I'll show you how to make chicken pot pie. Someone's in the kitchen with Dina. Someone's in the kitchen I know. Someone's in the kitchen with Dina. Gonna taste good I know. This once again is in my top five of my entrees that I would serve for my customers. It's chicken pot pie. I'm going to show you how to do it tonight. Um, I take the shortcut cheater method and use the store-bought pie crust. Feel like you can too. If you want to make a homemade pie crust, knock yourself out. I just don't usually have that much time and want to put that much effort into it because we eat it so fast. But first we're going to start with a filling. So let's head over to the stove. So this is a scratch chicken pot pie. It's actually uh, one of my original recipes that I figured out. You're gonna want a good size heavy saucepan and we're gonna turn it at least on about medium high heat. And all the goodness is in this. We've got peas and carrots. I add potatoes. I'm using leftover rotisserie chicken. You're gonna need some butter and some chicken broth and salt and pepper and a little garlic. Um, and I've even used some cheater methods I'll talk about as we go through since this one it's not difficult. It even works with like leftover Thanksgiving turkey would be excellent. So we're gonna start with a half a cup of butter. I know it sounds like a lot, but there's a lot of filling in this. So we're gonna let it melt. And we're gonna add some garlic and onion. And this is just onion from the frozen vegetable section. I keep it in my freezer just in case I don't have any fresh onion. And I found some and it needed used up. So I'm gonna use that today. It all gets cooked, you don't even realize, but it sure is handy to throw in soups and uh, stuff like that. So we're just gonna get that simmer in and get all the butter melted. And I'll, we'll take you on to the next stop here. And as that is simmering, I go ahead and add my salt and pepper. I've got a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. This is a two crust, super hearty, thick, chicken pot pie, it's definitely not runny. Um, another way that you can use the same sauce is for something that we call chicken a la king and all you would need to do is thin the sauce out and serve it over biscuits, kind of like, I don't know, chicken in a chicken, saucy chicken in a biscuit. I think it's really called chicken, chicken a la king. So you just want these to get till they're soft and because they're frozen, it really doesn't take much time at all. It's gonna cook again in the oven. Man, butter and garlic and onions smell so good. All right, so that's bubbling, looks good. Now we're gonna add a half a cup of flour. So this again is a roux-based one. Remember in my um, last recipe I made, it was also roux-based. And we want the flour to cook out so you don't have that raw flour taste. So I just let it cook a little. All right, that looks good. So now we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth. And I just always have in my pantry that chicken uh, better than bouillon. So I've just got two cups of hot water and two, two teaspoons of the bouillon. We're gonna add this slowly. Then we just kinda wanna stir this around until we get all the lumps out and it kind of starts bubbling again. You know, a lot of chicken pot pies are, you make the saucy part on the bottom and put like puff pastry or biscuits on the top or um, one pie crust. And I tell you, I really like the hearty meatiness and really filling part of this double crusted chicken pot pie. All right, so this is getting nice and bubbly and thick. Almost bubbling. This one also freezes great if um, you want to use do this for um, once a month cooking you could actually make a double batch of this and put it in the foil um, foil pie pans and those fit beautifully in a gallon size ziploc bag and you just pop them in the freezer and it's a great uh, 
thing to take to a family if they need a meal. All right, so this is looking really good. I'm gonna switch back to my spoon. Turn it down a tad. Okay, so now I'm gonna add, I had some um, leftover boiled potatoes. If you don't have any, that's okay, but this really adds to the hardiness of it. You can also pop a couple potatoes in the microwave for a couple minutes and get them all cooked. So we're gonna add about a cup of cooked potato, cubed up. Then I've just got some frozen peas and carrots. We're gonna pop those in, because what would chicken pie without peas and carrots be? Give that a stir. And it's okay if you throw them in frozen. I know mine were. It's all gonna get cooked again. And last but not least, we got two cups of, uh, this is just leftover rotisserie chicken. I'm gonna add that. Like I said, if you got, after Thanksgiving with that coming, if you got leftover turkey, this would be delicious. See how thick it is? That's gonna be your filling for your pie. And I just kind of combine it good. Now, if you were making it and you want to put this over biscuits, thin it down more with the broth or you can add less flour. I might do that as a whole nother episode. Okay, so this looks good. So we are going to turn off the heat and we're going to go get our crust ready. All right, so for your crust, I've just got a glass Pyrex um, baking or a pie pan. Like I said, I use the cheater method on this. Then you're just gonna wanna take a second and stretch it up size of your pie pan. This doesn't have to be pretty yet. We'll make it pretty in a second. Just wanna make sure that all your sides are on the side and all your corners are in there. All right, so before you start, I should tell you, preheat your oven to 375 degrees because you want it hot going in. Um, okay, so now we've got that all in our pie, we're gonna put our filling in. And it's about eight, I don't know, 10 pounds of filling. It's heavier than a gallon of milk. Yum, oh. Get all that goodness out. Try not to hit this when we're putting the top crust on because it is really hot and it's really sticky. And you'll burn yourself. Don't ask me how I know. Okay, so let's get our second crust on top. You are such a good student. <laughs> Whatever you're doing smells really good. It's really good, good. mom. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pop it on the top, then I'm gonna really gently push it in so it connects and sticks with the pie dough that we put in there. If you have to fold it down, that's okay. I like the rustic look. It is handmade after all. I know some of you guys think the crust is best, so if you want to stick that back in, go ahead. So I just roll it over, because it gets really bubbly, and pinch it together as I go. You could also take a fork and crimp it if you want. This right here is probably the hardest part of the whole thing, and it's not that hard. It just takes a second. All right, if you want to take the time and flute your edges, you totally can, but I never do. So then you want to make some vent holes in it. Get all that steam out. Okay, so now we're going to pop it in our 375 degree oven for an hour, and uh, you can go hang out while this bakes. I'm 
I'm going to go 55 minutes and we'll check it. All right, so this has bubbled everywhere in here. Okay, so this is hot out of the oven. As you can see, it bubbled over everywhere. Yours might do the same. If you have one of these pie, you set the pie dish on here, do that because more than likely it will happen to you too. And that's okay. That means it's extra delicious. So this really needs to set for at least 10 to 15 minutes for it to like cool down a little bit so you can cut it because then it will stay like in pie shape. Um, if you cut into it right now, it's so hot, it would just go kind of go everywhere. So we're gonna wait for about 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll be back and we'll cut it. All right, so it's been about 10 to 15 minutes and you can see that the bubbling has kind of subsided a little. So you can just cut into it and I'm never great at fine in the middle. And you can really cut these however big you want. Let's turn it this way. Does that look great? All right, hopefully, sometimes the first piece is the worst one to get out, but we're hoping for the best here. Oh, half of it's still in the pan, y'all. You can see, wow. I didn't get the chicken cut through. That's my problem. First one, not so pretty, but I tell you what, it's going to taste amazing. I'll still eat it. Yeah, me too. Get the pee back in there. You can see how it's nice and thick. It's not like the ones that you buy at the store where you pop the crust open and there's kind of no meat or anything in it. Okay, so I'm going to cut another one, but this is so delicious. It's probably going to be, the crust is nice and flaky and brown. It's the it's even done on the bottom. I don't know if I can't lift it up, but you can see how much steam is coming out of there. I don't know if you can see. Take a quick bite. It's going to be hot. It's hot. It's burning my hand onto the plate. Mmm. So good. So good. I hope you guys make this. It is so delicious. I don't even want to say goodbye. I'm just going to eat here with me delightful chicken pot pie and i'm proud to say that i came up with this one which is super cool i hope you try this comment below if you do don't forget to give me a thumbs up subscribe and turn the bell on so you don't miss out on the next recipes coming i hope you enjoy this with your family tonight and have a great night is my hair good oh you look marvelous <laughs> stop to think all my words <laughs> I'll start over. <laughs> you got the move it, move it. In 45 oh minutes. my goodness, it boiled over. That looks so good. Oh, man, oh man. Ow. Ouch. I just want to eat this. <laughs> Give me a piece. Come on. Okay. Gonna taste good, I know.